Hello everybody, Zeno here, and in this Adobe Flash tutorial, and I don't even know why I call it Adobe Flash anymore, it's Adobe Animate, but I still use the old version of Flash. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to export your animations into like a movie format that you can post to like YouTube, like MP4 and stuff like that. So the program that pretty much that does everything super easy for that would be this program that Newgrounds has created called Swivel. And I'll leave the link in the description below to download it pretty much. All what it does is just use your Swift file, encode it into an MP4 format by playing the animation while recording it, and boom, you got your file. So once you pretty much click the download, it just brings you down to the page. Download the version you need to. Mine's a Windows 64-bit version, probably everybody's, or maybe OS X. But um, once you're done downloading it and installing it, it'll just tell you to install it to your main hard drive. It's only like 60 megabytes, so there's really no reason not to install it. But once you're done doing that, you open it up, and it's going to play this neat little sound effect animation and thing. It's probably going to be... It's probably going to be loud. And this is the program, pretty much. It always opens like this. All what you have to do here is input your Swift files. And then you click over to the Video tab, output it to where whatever folder you want to. I usually just leave it on default and move it after I preview it. You can change the settings between, you know, like standard HD. I bet you could even do 4K if you wanted to. If your animation doesn't stretch to widescreen, you can crop it, letterbox it, or stretch it. It does. It has a whole bunch of features you can do. So I'm going to do a quick test with my two animations here. This super old one that I used for my intro way long time ago. Who knows how long ago. But this one has no action script in it. So it pretty much just plays for like 10 seconds and then it's over. Um, so we just have to find the file, which I actually got it right here ready to go. You can just drag and drop or click the add button and find it. But I'm going to drag and drop it. Xeno Intro 1. Or you can't drag and drop it. Never mind. See, we both learned something here. Okay, Xeno Intro 1. It kind of previews it in this little window right here. And you can start, you can choose what frame the, en the thing encodes it on and the frame it ends it on. And usually it defaults to the first one and to whatever last frame of animation you have. Even if it's a blank frame in the program, it'll leave it to that. So you always want to probably keep your render quality on high, because if you're going to post it to YouTube or something, you're going to want to make it look as lossless as possible. So just keep that on high. I don't even know why we would really have the other settings, because usually most people would have the hard drive space for this. But anyway, once you're done doing everything here, you can click on the video tab, and then it'll, um, it'll put an output default location, which is usually your desktop. Mine is the folder Flash stuff, so when it's done, when it's rendering, it'll put it in that folder. You just choose it wherever you want to go. Video size, usually I default it to 1080p because 4K content for animation isn't too different, and you can only encode the video bitrate so high because they recommend 4K to be 35 megabits per second, and this either lets you go lossless or about 24. So choose whatever resolution you want and be happy. I uh, really don't really s mess with these unless you're doing like development stuff. Like if you want a transparent background, if you want to like green screen, like a guy moving in a different movie, it's pretty much just all user. If if you need to use it, use it. If you don't know what it does, then don't even bother with it. But uh, keep the video codec on high H two six four. It's just kind of the best compression to quality ratio. Um, but for usually ten eighty p, I like to go to about 10 megabits usually it'll keep the file size low and it unless there's a lot of action going on you won't see a lot of pixelization so pretty much after that if you have sound effect in here or you don't want sound you can click that all over here I don't remember what the overlay does you can apparently enable a watermark I did not know that so if you don't want no one to steal your stuff put your logo on it and boom <laughs> but when you're done with that you just click the convert button and it pretty much just slowly plays out the file that's it pretty much just plays it in front of you so good thing this one isn't very long because usually it takes it does it about 60 percent of the speed depending on how much stuff is on the canvas and how fast your cpu is so as soon as this is done it'll pretty much just output the location i told it to and then it'll make this sound that sounds like the log commercial from ren and stimpy so you'll hear that here in a second and it always brings me back memories you hear it, but we're almost done. Mixing the audio track. There you go, it's done. So, 
pretty much it. You can click it right there to open it right away and preview it. So here it plays exactly how I wanted it to. Uh, I think I play it 60 frames per second and it's nice and smooth. So your frame rate it all depends on what the settings are in your flash file, the swift file. So you can't really change the frame rate in, in, in the in swivel. But um, now we're going to see what happens if we click something with action script in it. So I'm going to remove this one and add Sonic Gets Squished by Knuckles, which is actually the file I provided in one of my other episodes. And you'll be able to find that on my channel fairly easily. But here, this flash animation has um, press space to continue the text. And I believe if you have action script in it, it skips it entirely. So that one frame of text that you would put on there would instantly just go away because it's only for one quick frame and you can't stop a video unless you hit pause by yourself so keep that in mind if your animation has um, action script in it it might not play it properly and that's what we're going to do right here to test to see how well it goes okay I'm going to keep it at that resolution that encoding rate we're going to have the audio for it and convert so it's going to play this animation out entirely and we're going to see how this works. Because usually, I don't remember if it locks up at the frame it's encoding at or it skips it entirely. So this is actually a reminder for myself. But he'll find the text. He'll probably skip right over it immediately. Just like that. Finally, a Chaos Emerald. So it gets stuck. So I guess you can play it. I just hit the space so you can decide how long you want it to sit there for. Look, I hit space again. So you can actually determine how long you want these things to go. So we're learning both right here. So I can continue it whenever I want now. Not so fast there, buddy. I'm still restoring it to the power of those hinges. So you can just skip it all like that. Because, you know, I'm not really going to post this. I already have it on the internet. But I'm just doing this for testing purposes. So apparently, if there is a button or code you can execute, I guess it'll work. So he can sit there and laugh at it, hit space. That's pretty much the same thing as doing that. Th that doesn't have any press space to go because he's going to trip him. And then he's going to pretty much trip him, and then he'll fall. And it's a lot less exciting when it's in slow-mo and in slow-slow-mo. <laughs> But that's basically Swivel. So we both learned a lot today. I learned more. I didn't know Swivel was capable of doing stuff like that. So I was going to tell you guys that ActionScript wasn't going to work on it. But apparently it does. And you can render it to your liking. So now it's going to mix the audio that I had in it. I don't remember if the audio was built into the Swift file or I did it post-production on that tutorial. But we'll find out in a second. What rose downstairs? Okay, so we're gonna play it. So since it renders it a lot slower, my space buttons look like it took a lot longer when I pressed it myself. And did a lot faster on here because it's a 60 frames per second video. But basically, it's still... It's still copied how long it took for me to press the button. So keep that in mind. It's going to be a lot slower when you press it. And it's going to be a lot faster in the actual video itself. But that's basically swiveled. I don't think there's really anything else you can learn from this thing. Other than the fact that it just converts them into MP4 files. And I hope you learned something. And... If you guys, if this is the first video you saw of me for Adobe Flash stuff, uh, check out my other tutorials. You might actually learn something else. And with that, Zeno is out.